Welcome everybody to step two of our contour line drawing uh, project. Remember last time we talked a little bit about what blind contour looks like and then how we are actually doing just regular contour and then adding color to it. You're almost making your own coloring book. For my first one, I chose an artist that I'm passionate about named Kara Walker. For this one, I just picked a face that I wanted to focus on creating uh, on paper. So first step was finding your reference image, finding one with shadows, different contour in the face so we can break things down into shadows. And just a reminder, contour, it's important lines that you're drawing and kind of turning things into shapes. So we might see a shadow and then that's turning that into shape as well. So the first step is the hardest and that is the part where we are drawing what we see on our paper. Try not to be hard on yourself. And this is a really important one to help get you some feedback on. So if you're struggling with the drawing, uh, you can definitely ask for help because it's definitely the hard part. So to start with, I'm gonna try and get the outside shape of my uh, image kind of drawn here. And so to help with that, I'm just kind of lightly going around with my eye and following what I see. I see that her hair kind of comes down a little bit and then it goes off to the edge of the page. Now inside of that shape, which I know is very, very light for you to see, I can start to fill in some other important shapes. So for instance, her forehead line, it's not a direct shape, it's not a straight line or anything, but what I can do is start by just lightly sketching in where that goes. Now the way that I'm kind of following around what I see, and you'll notice I'm putting my pencil on the curve so that I can try and capture it. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit darker than I'd like you to go when you're drawing because uh, you need to see what I'm drawing uh, and it's much easier to erase if you make a mistake if it's lighter. So most people, and depending on the face that you have, uh, you should probably have things straight down the middle. I like to draw just a really light line just to kind of keep myself focused on making sure things are similarly distanced. Now, if your person's looking to the side, you won't be able to utilize that as a tool too much. All right, so I'm gonna go in and just kind of like analyze what I've already started with. It's very easy to make mistakes here. And so once you get that basic form in, it's not that I'm going back and erasing all of my premature lines. Instead, I'm just kind of going back in and trying to highlight and correct them a little bit. So I notice that the chin comes down here a little bit. Her face might be a little more round because of the angle it's at. So I'm actually gonna bring up that chin. A lot of people when they're drawing in this way, before they would draw the new line, they'd erase everything. But it's nice to keep that information in for yourself as you're editing. So now I know I don't need that anymore. I can get rid of it. And now I can start working on some more details. So rule of thumb, when you look at top to bottom of the head, typically, the eyes are in the center. Something most people don't believe at first, but once you see it, you'll notice that the eyes are actually pretty close to in the center. So I'm just gonna kind of draw the shapes that I see. You know, footballs are the starting point for most people with eyes, uh, but if you take a look at the actual curves that you see, they might be a little bit different from that, so. Um, just taking your time, and I know you can't see my eyes, but all I'm doing is going back and forth, back and forth, looking at what I see, trying to recreate it, okay? I'm also gonna look at the distance between things. So here I see that the eye kind of ends a little shorter, so that means it's a little smaller. Here I'm looking at my distance. I think I'm a little closer here, but this comes down. All right, I've got some basic starting points there. The nose, I know typically we don't actually see like the actual lines for the edge of a nose, but it's important to kind of turn it into a shape with this project. Um, especially in this phase where we're trying to get as much accuracy as possible in the shapes that we see. Everything you see, you're kind of turning into a, a line. You're looking for the contour, you're looking at the folds, any place that you have those details. Another great trick from the eyes to the chin, Typically the nose ends about halfway down. So mine I'm looking at, it's pretty correct there. And everything's just small shapes. I see a little curve, it comes up a little bit. So now's the time to really kind of perfect, uh, not perfect, but try and capture as much as you can um, according to what you see in the picture. Then we'll be more creative after. Um, the nose typically goes up and connects to the brow bone, which I'm gonna draw these as shapes. 
She's got really defined eyebrows. And when I look at how close they are to the eye, they're really close at the beginning. And then they go back and they kind of move further away. It's much better to get everything drawn and then kind of evaluate and change things than to just get stuck on one detail, like one eye. So I know things are not perfect, but I'll come back to it. All right, I've got a good start there. This eyebrow definitely comes down a little further. Okay, next, moving down to the lips. Typically from the bottom of the nose to the chin, the lips are somewhere in the middle. In her case, the lips are open, so it makes them a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna kind of measure for myself the distance between the bottom of the nose, top of the lip. I see this is probably like the middle line, somewhere in there is another shape, and then her bottom lip is a little bigger. So I'm gonna kind of create that shape down here. All right, you can also compare things like the edge of the mouth lines up with like part of the way to the eye, just to kind of see your lengths and your distances. Okay, that tells me roughly where I'm gonna be creating this shape. I see that there's that opening in her lip, and then I can kind of capture my top lip. She also has a tiny bit of teeth showing so if I want to, I can kind of focus on incorporating that. All right, so just to keep going down, I know there's a, some messed up things going on with these teeth, but I'm gonna keep moving. Um, now I can kind of go in, start to define where I see the edges of her neck coming down. Her hair kind of covers a lot of her, so you can kind of like sketch where you see that. In my case, I have this hand. I am gonna keep that part. I think that would be a nice element to continue, so I'm kind of I'm trying to notice where I see it in the picture and capture that coming down. Actually, I might get rid of it. I'm kind of torn about it. While I'm thinking about that, now is the time to go in and kind of double check things. So I still have some details that are missing. I might notice things like, okay, this area needs to come in a little bit more. I know I want to get the placement of where the pupils and the iris is. I also see that she's got eyelids that I'm not kind of capturing yet, so I'm gonna kind of throw those in. A lot of times people wanna put the eyelid above the shape that they created, but a lot of times actually drawing it inside of that original football shape gives you more accuracy in the eye. So I see that this one might need to be opened a little more, this one might need to be closed a little more just to kind of give some similarity. So at this point, I'm just kind of starting to evaluate where some things are, just double checking. I'm gonna work on this mouth a little more, work on this hand a little more. And then in our next video, we're gonna start turning it into different shapes. So it's a little more creative. This is difficult. Take your time, have your picture with you, and please ask for help as you go.